Hallo und herzlich willkommen. Mein Name ist Nox und wir spielen heute The Gene Machine. Es ist ein Point-and-Click-Adventure aus dem Jahre 1996, wurde von Divide by Zero entwickelt und der Publisher ist Victor Kai. Ähm, wir spielen einen Gentleman namens Pierce Fanshaw äh, im England des äh, viktorianischen Zeitalters, glaube ich, 1880 ungefähr. Und mehr weiß ich auch nicht. Also, ich würde sagen, wir fangen einfach mal an. Hey, Kitty, Kitty, Kitty! Oi, come here! Ow! Somebody grab him! Piers Featherstone Hall, gentleman and hero, is due to return from the Americas, having completed a secret mission of the utmost importance to the British Empire. If anyone can help me, this man can. trailing round America, followed by a couple of weeks on a steamer in a third-class cabin. Oh, it's good to be home, isn't it, Mossop? It's good to be back on dry land, sir. Right, but... Well, you seem to have regained some of your colour, old chap. You can't keep a good man down, sir. Just try keeping your meals down for now, Mossop. We're nearly home. Righty-ho, sir. of polite society, the very cornerstone of civilization, eh, Mossop? Right you are, sir. America's all very well, but I wouldn't like to live there. I can't help feel there's something missing. Poverty, I expect, Mossop. Not enough dregs of society, no beggars, no urchins, no common street tarts and drunken ne'er-do-wells. No wonder you felt out of place there. Still, it's a young country. Give them time. They'll have their own poor one day. But America is so big! How will they ever be able to manage all those people? Don't be too disparaging of the Americans. They could be very useful allies in a war someday. Come on, hail a carriage and let's go home, Mossop. There's bound to be one in the streets, sir. So, ich bin im Spiel. Um, also den Look finde ich schon mal sehr gut. Yes. Hey, uh, okay. <laughs> den Pixel-Stil mit dem gezeichneten und so. Sieht sehr Paper! cool aus. Und... Paper! <laughs> yeah, good. Um. All gentlemen carry one of these to protect them from unnecessary nastiness. This is made from genuine leather. I just want to go home and relax as soon as possible. Mossop can put the cab fare on my account. Paper! 
I just want to go home and relax as soon as possible. Mossop can put the cab fare on my account. Paper! That engine is a fine example of British Paper! scientific craftsmanship. Ich muss hier ganz schnell raus, Paper! weil mir das jetzt schon auf den Sack geht. Looking after her child must be a monumentous task. Paper! That young upstart could do with a lesson in good manners. That lady has a story or two to relate. That lady has a story or two to relate. Kann ich mit Leuten sprechen? Glaube nicht. It shows the schedule for the trains. It's advertising the joys of traveling up north. It's where one can buy periodicals. I would have to speak to the newsboy if I wanted to purchase one, though. It's a boy selling a periodical of some kind. What are you selling? The latest copy of the Sporting Times, Governor. All the results of last week's racing within these very pages. Essential information indeed. I'll take a copy. I'll be needing your payment, Governor. Can I have a copy of the Sporting Times? I'll be needing your payment, Governor. I see no reason for giving things away unnecessarily. I just want to go home and relax as soon Paper! as possible. Mossop can put the cab fare on my account. Paper! You, urchin boy! Summon us a handsome cab. Begging your pardon, sir, but I'm selling a newspaper, and my master'd be as like to flog me to death if I was off for not selling. You are not worthy of my attention, boy. Ich glaube, ich verstehe das Ganze noch nicht so wirklich. Deswegen klappt's nicht. Ich glaube schon, dass man ihm das geben kann. Ich mach's nur irgendwie falsch. Warte. He looks like an under tall kind of fellow. He looks like a well bred chap. What an amazing piece of architecture. They don't make them like that anymore. He's not important. He's my manservant. Wow. Um. Tell me a bit about yourself, Mossop. Well, sir, there's not much to tell. I was born in Clerkenwell to parents who were servants just like me. It runs in the family, then, the serving profession. Oh, yes, sir. And all 17 of me brothers and sisters are in the trade, too. Apart from one brother, he joined the Royal Navy. Why did most of your family become servants? We can't cook well enough to become chefs. We're too short to do any manual labor, and we don't have enough initiative to do things without being told what to do. Remind me again, why did I employ you? I was the cheapest, sir. Oh, yes, that's right. Mm. Why did your brother join the Navy? He was shanghai as he was emptying Lord Chumley's latrine into the Thames. A boat pulled alongside him, and he was bundled into a sack by some big burly thugs. I think they're called recruitment consultants, aren't they? We didn't hear from him for weeks. Lord Chumley was furious. Thought me brother had stolen his bucket.
Why are you following me? I'm your loyal and trustworthy manservant, sir. I will follow you to the grave. Actually, I think I'd rather let you go first to that particular destination. So, what should we do next, Mossop? I suggest we go home, sir. Me feet are killing me. Shouldn't we go somewhere more interesting than just my house? Sir, we've just travelled halfway across the world by land and sea. Haven't we had enough adventure for a while? I don't know, Mossop. I get the feeling that this is the start of a whole new adventure. <laughs> da hat er recht. Let's get on a train and go somewhere exciting. Actually, sir, I'd rather go home and put me feet up. And so you shall, Mossop. As soon as you've done the laundry, cleaned the house and made me some tea. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? How are we going to get home? We should take a cab, sir. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Hmm. Sanderson's. Aha! A hansom cab. The only civilized way of getting around town. I should get this one to take me home. Instruct the driver to wait here, Mossop. I may want to go out again later. Righty ho, sir. Home at last. Fetch me a drink, Mossop. I need to relax a little before I make my report to the Queen. But you're not due to report in for a week, sir. Better make it a large drink then. What? Ex excuse me, Mr. Featherstone Haw, I presume? I can't believe it. Nor can I, sir. I don't believe you cannot pronounce my name properly. It's Fanshaw. But it... it's a talking cat, sir. It speaks English. It's hardly talking English if it can't pronounce one's name. It's perfectly simple. F, silent E, A, silent T, silent H, silent E, silent R, S, silent T, silent O, N. Swap the N and the S, silent E, H, A, U, G, H. Haw! Fan Shaw! I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Fan Shaw. Please accept my sincerest apology. Very well, but don't let it happen again. What do you want? I'm desperately in need of help from a renowned gentleman such as yourself. Oh, you want a job? Well, I'm sorry, but I already have Mossop here for my manservant, and I'm happy with his work. But if you can cook anything other than bangers and mash, and manage to take a boat trip without shouting your lunch at the fishes every five minutes, you might be in with a chance. Oh no, Mr. Fanshaw, I'm not looking for work. That's typical of the youth of today, Mossop. They think the world owes them a living. Too true, sir. You misunderstand me, sir. I am here to implore you to undertake a mission. A mission so dangerous and so important that the fate of the world may very well depend on it. I beseech you, as a gentleman, to listen to what I have to say. As a gentleman, I'm obliged to hear your story, but make it brief, or Mossop, as a manservant, will be obliged to throw you out of my house. Very well, Mr. Fanshaw. Thank you. My story begins thousands of miles away on a remote tropical island in uncharted waters. There. Deep within a mountain lies the diabolic laboratory of Dr. Dinsey. Who's Dr. Dinsey? He's an evil, twisted genius who has discovered the satanic secret of combining two different species to make a new creature altogether. He has a device that he calls the gene machine. The two original creatures are completely destroyed and the resulting animal is so different, so strange. Mr. Fanshaw, what he's doing is against God himself. Sounds all right to me. Maybe this doctor could combine Mossop with a fish to get him some sea legs. You don't understand, Mr. Fanshaw. Dr. Dinsey intends to create an army of horrific creatures which he can use to take over the world. This all seems a bit far-fetched to me. I am living proof of his madness. He took a normal alley cat and combined it with a human being to make me. I was his 73rd experiment. That's my name, 73. So you have all the sentience and intelligence of a man. 
but also the agility and suppleness of a cat. Yes, Mr. Fanshawe. Washing myself has a whole new meaning to me now. You wouldn't believe what I can bend over and lick. A real gentleman would never lick himself. There. Now. It gets someone else to do it. You know, I think this is just some sort of confidence trick to extort money out of God-fearing fellows. You're probably just some hair-suit boy with a, a tail. Mossop, throw him out. No, wait. You're my only hope. There is no one else brave enough to conquer Dr. Dinsey. Oh, I'm sure there's lots of gullible people round who'd only be too happy to help you. But they don't have your reputation, Mr. Fanshawe. I'm sorry I bothered you. I thought you were the bravest adventurer in the world. The newspapers must have it wrong. Maybe I'll try Rafe Kingpiece instead. He claims that he fears nothing at all. Kingpiece? I wouldn't believe anything that rogue says. The man's a charlatan. He dyes his hair, you know. He's not naturally blonde. And yet I'm sure he would take on this mission. For a price, I'll wager. The knowledge that he had saved the world would doubtless be reward enough. Not for him. That bounder can't be trusted. If he saved the world, he'd probably keep it for himself. You give me no choice. Help me, Mr. Fanshawe, or I will have to ask Mr. Kingpiece. Well, we can't have that, can we? Mossop, hail a carriage to take us to Buckingham Palace. I'll inform Queen Victoria about the situation, and we'll have the Royal Navy sort this scoundrel out in short order. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. Dinsey has spies everywhere. If a naval task force was assembled, he'd go to ground and disappear until he was too powerful to stop. We'll find someone else to help, then. Who else would believe my story, Mr. Fanshawe? They'd think it was a trick, like you did. You'll have to do it alone. My master is not afraid to fly in the face of adversity. Thank you, Mossop. Just what exactly do you expect me to do? You must get to Dinsey Island and defeat the Doctor and his mutant army. Where is this island? Uh, the area is uncharted, so I don't know. You'll have to find it. My master can find anything. Thank you, Mossop. Can you give me a clue, 73? While I was there, I heard the doctor talking about the only other man who knew the location of the island. A seafarer called Captain Nematode, who shared Dinsey's hatred of the world's governments and who helped him to set up his laboratory. Then we must charter a ship and find this Captain Nematode. Mossop, what funds do we have left after our American trip? Not enough to charter a ship and a crew, sir. In fact, barely enough to feed us for a week. Are you saying that because you don't want to set sail again, Mossop? Oh, no, sir. But couldn't we go on an adventure we could walk easily to just this once? Please, an ambling adventure. Couldn't we tackle a menace that's just a brisk stroll away? A threat that's only a jaunty saunter down the road. Who knows, sir? There might be a mad doctor just around the corner we could battle. Oh, yes, Mossop. Wouldn't that be just so convenient for you if the local family doctor turned out to be a crazy monster? I don't think so. Not a good, decent man like Dr. Jekyll. I don't go to him. I go to that nice young Dr. Crippin. Anyway, we really do have next to no ready funds, sir. Then I will have to raise the necessary funding myself. 73, you stay here, where you'll be safe from passing circus folk who may wish to turn you into a sideshow attraction. Mossop, we must think of a way to get some money. About £8,000 will do, I should think. £8,000? However will we find that much? Hmm. Do you think the cat is telling the truth? When I first looked at him, I couldn't believe me own eyes, sir. I'm not sure who or what to trust anymore. So, what shall we do next, Mossop? I wouldn't like to say, sir. I'm sure you've a good plan, as usual. I need to find people of dubious reputation. Why on earth do you want to do that, sir? A fine, upstanding gentleman like yourself shouldn't be involved with people of that kind. If I'm to obtain the necessary funds to charter a steamship, I must resort to nefarious methods. And since I'm a decent, God-fearing Englishman, I have no natural penchant for criminal activities. Therefore, I shall consult the experts. There's plenty of those in London, sir. You're born of common stock, Mossop. You must know a den of iniquity somewhere. I think the place you're looking for is the Crab and Sailor. What kind of establishment is that? It's a public house, sir, with a bar that serves real ale. It's only the water that's recycled. Sounds perfect. Where is it? Whitechapel, sir. 
one of the most dangerous flea-ridden mud holes in the British Empire. It's renowned for being voted place least likely to host the Great Exhibition of 1851. We'll have to visit there on our travels. It could come in very useful. What valuable possessions do we have in the house, Mossop? Well, I don't have anything of value. And so you shouldn't. Not on the salary I pay you anyway. <laughs> Where's my tea? I'm sorry, sir. I'll make it as soon as I have time. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Okay, dann schaue ich mich erstmal im Haus um, denke ich. A visitor must have left that here. This might come in handy to put things in. This is made from genuine leather. Let's see what I've got in my wallet. Mm -hmm, okay. Let's see what I've got in my wallet. Let's see what I've got in my wallet. No more. Oh wow, that can't even feel that. There's nothing useful left in there. All gentlemen carry one of these to protect them from unnecessary nastiness. This normally contains certain items that should be flushed, not burned. I could use this as an airtight and watertight container. Mm -hmm. It has my address and the correct spelling of my name printed on it. Mm. This is all the ready cash I have left, a few measly pounds. This is a rather ornate membership card with my name on it. Of course, the Highborn Club. Its membership is composed entirely of rich gentlemen who like nothing better than to waste their inherited money on insane ventures. I'll surely be able to find someone there to invest in my expedition. Okay. Mossop hasn't tidied up very well. That issue is weeks old. I must have words with Mossop. A gentleman cannot be expected to tidy up after himself in this day and age. <laughs> this is an old copy of the Sporting Times from before I went to America. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Ich dachte, wir sollen ihm sagen, dass er unordentlich ist. Na ja, gut. Das ist echt schön gezeichnet. Es sieht so cool aus. Hmm. Maybe I could sell some of my more antique possessions. I should consult the Royal Scientific Institute about this. That's a lot heavier than it looks. I like that rug just where it is. Na gut. It's too warm to bother lighting a fire. Help me! Help! Mossop, remember when we had the chimney swept before we left for America? Okay. Yes, sir. A young lad did it. Did you actually see the boy leave the house? Come to think of it, sir. No. I don't recall actually seeing him go. Hmm. Might have to get the chimney swept again, I think. Mm, Kinderarbeit. Oh, oh. Let's see. Maybe some of my books can help me in my quest. How to be a complete gentleman. I already know that one off by heart. <laughs> the One Minute Gentleman. Read it. Who's who? I already know everyone worth knowing. The Lost City of Atlantis. No good. It just says it's lost. Train your manservant the Woodhouse way. Well, that didn't work. 
how to speak to commoners. Why should I want to do that? Why the British Empire will never end. Good and reassuring, but not what I'm looking for. Ooh la la, Nanette. Something for another time, I think. Saucy, buxom ankle stories. Something for another time, I think. How to Impersonate Royalty, Volume 2. Dash, this is the version on dressing up as a female member of the royal household. I would certainly never consider that. Nice illustrations, though. Naja, eigentlich könnte das ja schon nützlich sein. 1001 Activities for the Idle Rich. What a lifesaver that book has been in the past. How to speak to foreigners. Why would I want to do that? How to execute your own fakes, forgeries, cons and swindles. Oh, yes, that's the book that cost me five guineas. The one with all the blank pages. How to conquer feelings of guilt when beating one's manservant. Well, I've never felt guilty, so that's a waste of time. That's a very strange humor, that game. Oh, God. Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley. It's quite a rare book, I believe. Shame no one would be interested in it, except the author, perhaps. I think I've exhausted my library. Nothing seems to be of any help. That's is a kind of good sammlung. <laughs> Maybe I could find some useful information in my book collection. I think I've exhausted my library. Okay. Nothing seems to be of any help. Good. I don't think those are valuable enough to sell. Gibt's da vielleicht ein einzelnes Buch oder so? That's my private drawer. It contains my most valuable documents. It's locked. Locked. Ich habe keinen Schlüssel. That's a little knickknack I got from a street trader when I was in the colonies. Its only worth is as a paperweight. This is a worthless knick-knack I brought on my travels a few years ago. Hmm. Ich wollte das restliche Haus dann nochmal untersuchen und dann mit der Katze reden und dann weiß ich auch nicht. <lacht> Muss ich irgendwie versuchen, Geld zu organisieren, um die Welt zu retten. Man sollte meinen, die anderen Menschen hier wären auch daran interessiert. I don't think that's valuable enough to sell. I say, someone sent me a letter. I know a gentleman never fetches his own mail, but I shall make an exception in this case. I can always deduct something from Mossop's salary. I won't find out what this envelope contains unless I open it. Hmm. There's a letter inside this envelope. Jeder Schritt wird einzeln gemacht. <laughs> it's an empty envelope addressed to me. This must be from my beloved Mirabella. I recognize the scent. Venus flytrap, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I bet it's a love letter. How much she's missed me. How she longs for my embrace. When will I go and see her? That sort of thing. She's absolutely besotted with me. Bless her. Let me see. Dear Piers, or should I say, gutless, unchivalrous oh. bag of maggot-ridden offal! How dare you go off to America without me? I had to go shopping using my own allowance for weeks. You'd better get your deceitful hide round to my house immediately, or you can kiss our engagement goodbye. And you'd better have bought me a jolly expensive present too. Yours sincerely, Mirabella de Camembert, Miss. Oh dear, 
I suppose I better go and see her. She doesn't like being kept waiting. Naja, aber das wirkt so, als wenn sie hinter dem Geld von ihm her wäre und nicht hinter ihm als Person. Also, so schlimm würde ich das jetzt... Oh, nein! Nein, 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 nein. Würde ich das jetzt nicht finden, wenn sie ihn verlässt. Wieso kann ich da unten nicht hingehen? Äh, hallo? Uh. This is the first time I've been in Mossop's room. So this is how he chooses to live. Two chairs and a bed. I'm paying him far too much. If Mossop uses that in his cooking, it would explain a lot. This could set major events in motion. This is a medicinal brew used to unblock plumbing, so to speak. Oh, Rob Roy Glaswegian Malted Industrial Whiskey. Recommended for paint stripping, treatment of verrucas and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Drink only in emergency. I hope Mossop keeps this strictly for medicinal purposes. I'm sure Mossop won't mind me borrowing this. After all, I provided the wages that paid for it. That's it awesome Gefängnis here. This is a well-blended but industrial strength whiskey. Ah, a veritable cesspit of lower class bacteria. I would not even let a dog sleep on that flea-ridden mattress. Oh, the moss up. Oh, voll hübsch. Also so schön gezeichnet. <laughs> I don't think that's valuable enough to sell. That's one of my keys. I must have left it there by mistake. I shouldn't have left this lying around. It keeps my most valuable possessions safe and sound. It's the key to the bureau drawer in my study. Habe ich mir schon gedacht. Das ist wirklich schön. Ah, my lovely, comfortable bed. There had better not be any cat hairs on it when I get back. I haven't got time to sleep. Okay. It's the key to the bureau drawer in my study. Now there is my most valuable possession. This is the deed of property to this house. It's worth thousands of pounds. There's nothing else valuable in there. Whoever owns these owns my house. I better hang on to them. Ich will das Haus nicht verschachern, wenn es geht. Your room is filthy, Mossop. I'm sorry, sir. I'll clean it as soon as I have the time. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Half human, half feline. Who'd have thought it was possible? 
Sie soll nicht immer abhauen. <lacht> ich will mit dir reden. Hübsche Taschenuhr. Ich mag das, auch, das alles so schön gezeichnet ist hier im Inventar und so. Wirklich sehr hübsch. 73! Hallo! get here from Dinsey Island? To tell the truth, I just swam west until I saw a passing ship, clambered aboard and stowed away for a couple of weeks. Luckily, it was en route to Southampton Docks. How did you come to hear of me and my adventuring exploits? There was a newspaper on the floor of my cage. It had a feature on you. They gave you reading matter? Oh, how civilized. Uh, wasn't actually for reading, Mr. Fanshawe. You are house trained, aren't you? I don't know, Mr. Fanshawe. I've never been in a house before. Well, when and if you feel the urge, go outside or in Mossop's room. Stay here, but stay off the furniture. Ich find's cool, dass hier die Schublade offen ist. Ein Detail, was ich sehe. Ja, cool finde. Okay, ich glaube, ich gehe erstmal zur Verlobten und dann in den Königspalast, denke ich. Where to, Governor? Oh. Bonsbury. Do you mind if I wait here, sir? I know Miss Mirabella is your betrothed, but, uh, but... But what, Mossop? Well, she scares me, sir. Nonsense, Mossop. She's just strong-willed, with a mind of her own. She knows what she wants, and she's going to make me get it for her. Wait for me here. Thank you, sir. Where to, Governor? Barnsbury. Yeah, you'll never guess who I had in the back of my cab yesterday. Not if I sit here silently staring out of the window and pretending not to hear you. No. Wait here, Mossop. Thank you, sir. Okay, ich glaube, ich werde erstmal draußen gucken und dann ins Innere des Hauses gehen. There's some wild catnip growing down there. Na, da wird sich die Katze ja freuen. I don't care for the sweet smell myself, but I understand it appeals to many animals. I think 73 might appreciate this. This plant is quite popular with cats, so I've heard. Kann ich hier eigentlich speichern? Ah ja, okay. Game stored. Mirabella, my darling. It's about time! I sent that letter a week ago! But I've only just returned from America, my sweet. I came as soon as I could. Pierce, if you really loved me, you would have got here sooner. I've had a simply awful time with the wedding invitations. I had to write them all out myself. It's a good job the diamond on the engagement ring you gave me was so small. Otherwise, the added weight on my hand would have made the task even more unbearable. Uh, exactly how many people 
Have you invited my little poppet? Including your family and friends? Uh, about 30 of them, yes. Well, so far there's 30 plus 3, that's 33, 38, 41, 47, up. 1,018. 1,000 and... We don't even know that many people. But they're people we should know, Piers. It's typical of you to try to stifle my chances of becoming someone important. I go to the trouble of inviting dukes and earls and people who mean something in society, and you want to spoil it for me as usual. Sometimes I wonder why I'm marrying you at all. Die Frage könnte ich diesem Herrn hier eher stellen. <laughs> Diese Dame, oh, na egal, das war nicht. It's so rare to see wildlife that hasn't been scared off by Mirabella's presence. <laughs> How sweet the bird's song is. Mm. That is my beloved fiance. She's as affectionate as a great white shark and she shops like there's no tomorrow. Can I have my engagement ring back? Uh is there anything I can get to make you happy, dearest? <laughs> a knighthood would be good for a start. But for now, a strong cup of tea would be nice. I will be talked at by you later, my sweet. Okay, den Ring brauche ich wohl irgendwie. Aber, äh, noch nicht. Ich guck mich erstmal um. Mossop, hilf mir. Why does Mirabella scare you so? She looks down on me, sir. Everybody looks down on you, Mossop. You're short. No, sir. She treats me like I'm a tool for her own personal use and abuse. You're lucky. I've got to wait until my wedding night to be treated like that. <laughs> okay. Come and see Mirabella with me, Mossop. I really would rather not, sir. She doesn't like me very much. I don't think she likes me very much, but I still have to go and see her. I don't see why I should have to go alone. A manservant should never interfere with his master's romantic escapades. Is that some sort of rule for manservants? No, it's a rule for staying employed, sir. Immer was hat er denn von der Frau? Ist sie reicher als er oder so? Weil andernfalls kann ich mir das nicht vorstellen, warum man sie heiraten soll. So, what should we do next, Mossop? I wouldn't like to say, sir. I'm sure you have a good plan as usual. Ja, ich frag ja nicht aus Jux und Dollerei, ne? I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. That's Gertrude, the senile maid of my beloved Mirabella. Hello, Gertrude. Why, if it isn't Prince Albert. Mm. Can you make Mirabella a cup of tea? Oh's Mirabella? She's your mistress. Oh, never mind. Just make a cup of tea, will you? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Gertrude. Why, if it isn't Prince Albert. Go away, Gertrude. Very well, your royal highness. Can I go up? No. I must go later, I think. Can I go here? No. Okay. Okay, dann denke ich, ist der Palast Where to, Governor? eine gute Wahl, oder? Weil die Welt ja bedroht wird. Also muss ich den Boss beschreiben. Buckingham Palace. <lacht> Oh, 
Are we going to see the Queen, sir? We certainly are, Mossop. Not only do I have to report on my American business, but I will also ask for her help in vanquishing Dr. Dinsey. But you aren't booked in to see her until next week, sir. And you know how she is about appointments and punctuality. Yes, yes, I know that, Mossop. But this is an emergency, and I am one of her most secret and trusted agents. I'll get in to see her. What do you know about Queen Victoria? She's the head of state for the British Empire. She's got a picture on all the postage stamps. Do you know anything important about the Queen? Only that you take back half my wages as an extra royal tax applied exclusively to servants of people who work for the Queen directly. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. But remember, Mossop, it's a secret tax. You mustn't tell anyone else about it. Righty ho, sir. You can depend on me. Do you like the decor here, Mossop? Oh, yes, sir. It's magnificent. Well, don't get used to it. You have to be born into the proper social circles to come here regularly. Even the servants here are a cut above the sort of rabble you were born from. Net. <laughs> I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Ich weiß nicht, ob das irgendwie an meinen Kopfhörern liegt, aber manchmal habe ich so ein kleines Quietschen oder Knirschen oder so. He's one of the Grenadier Guards who ensure the security of Buckingham Palace. Attack? Nein, danke. It's a well-known fact that one cannot reason with a soldier. Ah, ja. Die sprechen, glaube ich, nicht. It's a well-known fact that one cannot reason with a soldier. Halt! Oh. Who goes there? Oh, oh, oh. Identify yourself or be shot. I am Piers Fanshawe, secret agent of Her Majesty the Queen, and I carry news of vital importance to the Empire. Piers? Who? I've never heard of you. That's because I'm a secret agent. Now let me in. How do I know you're a secret agent? Do you have a badge? Secret agents don't have badges. Or they wouldn't be very secret, would they? Do you have any gadgets, then? You know... Like fountain pens that turn into Gatling guns. Or a walking cane that converts into a field cannon. Or a top hat that always points due north. No. Now, let me past. Do you have an appointment? Yes. It's just not for today. Then I cannot let you pass. Ordinary people can't just walk into the palace whenever they feel like it. You must have an appointment. So Her Majesty won't see anyone who hasn't got an appointment? Well... If you were a royal stock yourself, that would be a different matter. They always look after their own. Hmm. I see. Hmm. It's a well-known fact that one cannot I reason know. with a soldier. If... That card really doesn't help me right now. Ich dachte, das zeigt ihm, dass ich hier auch so ein feiner Pinkel bin. That card really doesn't help me right now. Mm. If I give too many valuables away, I shall have to register myself as a charity. Na gut. Where to, Governor? Um, think I'm a highborn club, or? The highborn club on Piccadilly. Ich bin ganz fasziniert von diesem Malstil. Ich weiß nicht, ist das Aquarell? Nee. Das ist sehr hübsch, finde ich. Try to remain inconspicuous, Mossop. May I ask why, sir? This is a gentleman's club and servants are frowned upon. You shouldn't really be here at all. Maybe I could pretend to be a gentleman, sir. Oh, be serious, Mossop. <laughs> 
I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Oh je. Ich komme hier in kein Etablissement, nicht in den Palast, nicht in den Club. Hm. I've seen that chap so many times, but I just cannot remember his name. I don't think I've ever said any more than the most cursory greeting to him. Na gut. Good day, Mr. Fedjor. Hello, Peter. Uh, Potter, sir. Jolly good. He's one of the highborn club servants. I try not to speak to servants unless it's strictly necessary. If I'm not mistaken, that's a glass of slow burn special reserve, a hideously expensive port drunk only by the most decadent of men. It smells diabolic, vitriolic, but above all, alcoholic. <laughs> I fear that even tasting such a drink will give me a severe case of gout. I will not deliver that drink to anyone. That's a job for the butler. Ja, ich dachte, um He's one of the highborn club servants. Ja, um Na gut. Those are paintings of famous war heroes, famous for sending off thousands of men to fight on their behalf, that is. Those are paintings of famous war heroes, famous for sending off thousands of men to fight on their behalf, that is. It's a box of Old Faithful, the most powerful snuff in the world. It must belong to one of the club members. I'm sure I can find a more practical use for this than sticking it up my nose. This box of old faithful snuff powder is one of the strongest available, second only to gunpowder in terms of potency. I don't partake in that sort of thing. Call me old-fashioned, but I believe the only thing that should go up one's nose is fresh, clean air. Mind you, ask Mossop. He probably says it's his finger. <laughs> I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Okay, ich dachte, er hätte noch was zu sagen zu dem Ort hier. Oh, okay. That's the Earl of Lytton. I was at school with him. That's the Earl's calling card. It identifies him as a member of royalty, mm -hmm. albeit several thousandth in line to the throne. I don't think the Earl would appreciate me rifling through his possessions. Aber ich würde das sehr gut finden. <laughs> Und das ist das Einzige, was zählt. He's one of the denizens of the Highborn Club. Overpaid, oversexed and over the hill. He's one of the denizens of the Highborn Club, overpaid, oversexed, and over the hill. Gentlemen, I have returned. Ah, Fanshawe! Long time no see. How are our American cousins? Coming along quite nicely, considering they've had independence for almost a century now. They're getting the hang of it. Give them another hundred years and they'll probably be the major power on this planet. What? Bigger than the British Empire? Well, that's preposterous! Who ever heard of such a thing? One can't stand in the way of progress. Change is inevitable. Boulder Dash! All this talk of progress and change, that's why we've got the British Army, to stop that sort of thing. If you're going to continue to spout such contemporary liberal nonsense, we may have to reconsider your membership of this club. Hmm. Excuse me, gentlemen. Anybody fancy a wager? Why would we want to make a bet with you, rather than with a respectable bookmaker?
because I'm a member of this club and therefore I am as trustworthy as you are. We know how trustworthy we are. Therefore, that's not a very convincing argument. <laughs> so I say again, sir, why you and not a respectable bookmaker? Because respectable bookmaker is a contradiction in terms. So is gentle men, for that matter. So pray tell, why should we make a wager with you? Because I give stupid odds. How stupid? One hundred to one. Okay, you're on. What's the bet? I wager I can get from here to Dinsey Island in a week. Where on earth is Dinsey Island? I don't know. No one knows. That's what makes it such a good bet. All I know is that it's in the tropics. How will you get there? You don't have a ship, do you, Henshaw? No, but I was hoping you'd let me borrow against my stake so that I could charter a ship. In the interest of good sportsmanship, I don't see why not. I see why not. King Peace. What are you doing here, you rogue? I'm a member of this club too, Piers. You know that. I have every right to be here. This is a private matter between myself and these honourable gentlemen. Go and bother someone else. Oh, Piers! You of all people know what an honourable person I am. I would be remiss in my duty as a gentleman if I turned a blind eye to the blatant confidence trick such as the one you are trying to pull on my friends here. What? Explain yourself, King Peace. This is a serious accusation. I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is a serious matter. My friend, Mr. Fanshaw, has offered you a hundred to one odds for a perilous journey to an uncharted isle, correct? I regret to announce that he is deceiving you. The voyage is easy. You will lose your stake money for sure. That's poppycock. I will stake my honor on it. Would you stake your club membership on it? and offer to retire from polite society if you're proved wrong? I stand by my word, sir. What do you say to that, King Peace? Well, friends, I suggest we give Mr. Fanshaw a run for his money. I will race him to Dinsey Island, and he must beat me to win the bet. And I have my own ship, fully crewed by experienced sailors and friends in the government, who will expedite my passage through the blockade. What do you say, gentlemen? It's a good offer. And it means we don't have to pay for Fanshaw's ship. King Peace, you've got a deal. But he's not part of the wager. He's just doing this to spite me. We're changing the terms of the wager, Fanshaw. As is our right, being of the upper classes. You must beat young King Peace to this Dinsey Island place, or resign from this club and never set foot in London again. Agreed? Agreed. But what happens if I win? Oh, Piers, it's not the winning, it's the taking part. <laughs> got to go! I've got a ship to catch! But how am I going to be able to compete with him when I haven't got a ship myself? There may be a way for you to give yourself a fighting chance, Fanshaw. I've got a ship I'd be willing to gamble if the stakes were high enough. You'd do that for me? Only because you're a desperate man, and desperate men make silly wagers. Give me a high enough stake and a safe enough bet, and you could win my ship. I think I may take you up on that. Fanshaw, if you haven't got a decent stake and a safe bet to gamble on for my ship, you'd better go out and try to find a way to get to this Dinsey Island place before King Peace does. Or you won't like the consequences. Ja, ich befürchte, dass am Ende dieses Spiels ähm, er mit nichts dasteht. Kein Haus, kein Geld, kein Titel, kein gar nichts. Fanjo, if you haven't got a decent stake and a safe bet to gamble on for my ship, you'd better go out and try to find a way to get to this Dinsey Island place before King Peace does. Or you won't like the consequences. Was habe ich jetzt gemacht? Keine Ahnung. Mm. Will this do as a stake? The deeds to my house. It's a lovely two-bedroom terrace property in the heart of London, with an easy access of shops and plenty of parking space for carriages. That would be quite nice as a love nest for a mistress, I suppose. I accept your stake. 
Found a safe bet yet, Fanshaw? Look lively, old chap. You're running out of time. Hey, I thought the the wette was the typen there to slagen, or not? Hello there. You're the Earl of Lytton, aren't you? Do you remember me? Fanshaw. Piers Fanshaw. We were at school together. Do you mind? I'm trying to concentrate on my shot. Sorry, old chap. Actually, Fanshaw, you can do me a favor. Run along and find that senile butler and tell him to bring me my port. I've been waiting minutes. Good to see you too. I don't think I can face talking to him again. He was insufferable at school as well. It's all come flooding back to me. I don't think the Earl would appreciate me rifling through his possessions. Das ist mir aber egal. Hallo. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. Hm, ich dachte, ich kann ihm irgendwas sagen. Na gut, dann nicht. Hm. I try not to speak to servants unless it's strictly necessary. Ja, ist es doch. Hallo? I will not deliver that drink to anyone. That's a job for the butler. I must add the right ingredient for it to be useful to me. I fear that even tasting such a drink will give me a severe case of gout. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Fanshaw. Cheerio, Portly. A Potter, sir. Excellent. <laughs> Voll gemein. Mach damit Absicht. Where to, Governor? Blackfriars Station. Wer eine Zeitung kaufen? Vielleicht können wir Neuigkeiten erfahren, die wichtig sind. He's waiting for the next train. This is all the ready cash I have left. A few Paper! measly pounds. Thank you kindly, Governor. Paper! This is the latest Sporting Times, just a few days old. Okay, ich dachte, da steht irgendwas drin. Where to, Governor? Hmm. Die Wissenschaftler, Whitechapel, Docks. Da sind eher so ein bisschen... Düstere Gestalten, würde ich mal sagen. Da brauche ich die Karte von dem Earl. Da muss ich irgendwie eine Wette abgeben, wie auch immer. Ähm, der Tee könnte vielleicht fertig sein. Ich glaube, ich gehe zu den Wissenschaftlern. The Royal Scientific Institute Kensington. What are we doing here, sir? 
We may be able to sell some of my possessions to the Institute to raise funds for the mission. Where are we going to find the other £7,999 from, then? I'll have you know that some of my possessions are very valuable indeed. That Ming vase of mine, for example. You know, the one you dropped when you were dusting it. Well, I'm sure I've got some other items that are worth selling. Do you know anything about science, Mossop? Not really, sir. I never went to school. Ich mag es, dass ich mit dem reden kann. Ähm, bei dem Spiel mit dem Musketier, da konnte ich nicht so viel mit dem ähm, Diener sprechen. Und ich finde das eigentlich ganz schön irgendwie. Why didn't you go to school? Because I was too clever, sir. Too clever? Are you sure that was the reason? Well, they said they couldn't teach me anything, and that anything they told me went in one ear and out the other. My father said it was because my brain was full. Your innate mental capabilities are handed down from your parents, then? Correct, sir. They never went to school, neither. Are you interested in history, Mossop? No, sir. My grandmother said that you should always live for the present, because nothing you've done in the past will matter in the future. And what happened to her? She was killed by her own boomerang. So, what should we do next, Mossop? I wouldn't like to say, sir. I'm sure you've a good plan, as usual. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty-ho, sir. Wow, I love this building. It's old, majestic, and massive. Just like my beloved British Empire. She looks like a very fashionable lady. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. He stops the rabble getting in. You can't go through there, sir. It's for historians and scientists only. How do you know I'm not one of the cognoscenti? You're dressed too tastefully, sir. Please let me in. I'm a, a collector of antiquities. I'm afraid you'll have to show me that you're a serious collector. This is an elite establishment. We can't let any old riffraff in. You must let me in. I have in my possession an incredible talking cat. Sir, this is a respected scientific institute, not Barnum and Bailey's circus. I have come to visit the eminent writer and scientist Herbert George Wells. Sorry, sir, he's gone away. He said he'd be back before anyone would even know he was gone. Look, I've discovered the missing link. Unless I'm much mistaken, that's your manservant, sir. Yes, he was under my nose all the time. Isn't that amazing? You don't believe me, do you? No, sir. Let me through or my manservant will bite you. That wouldn't be wise on his part, sir. I fought in the Crimean War and killed 30 Russian dragoons with just my appendix. Mm. I won't talk with you now. I'm a busy man. This is part of my collection. Will this convince you that I deserve to be allowed in? It's a nice piece. Late Phoenician. I'm sorry for doubting you, sir. You are a true aficionado. Please, go on through. I've already convinced him I'm an aficionado. I thought man can go further with him. What is this? Is this a living eagle under glass or what? But look at it! 
It's a monstrosity! It will never work. You don't know what you're talking about, Tipple. Computing engines are the future of science. To ignore the calculating power of our analytical engine is folly. But all the Institute's funds have been squandered on this... this... oversized abacus. The future is in exploration. If you would only give me the staff necessary to complete my project. Oh, yes. Your project. To go to the moon? Tipple, you are a fool. Even if you got there, you would find nothing but dust. That's where you're wrong. By my calculations, there is a resource on the moon of such quantity that the first people to stake a claim will be rich beyond their wildest dreams. And if this institute were to help me in my work, you could build all the analytical engines you wanted with the spoils. We will not risk any of our staff on your wild goose chase, Tipple. Your plan for getting to the moon is reckless, untested, and probably suicidal. We'll see who has the last laugh. Hmm. Pompous old academics. What would they know about anything? If they wouldn't reason with the professor, they certainly wouldn't talk to me. That's Professor Tipple, one of London's more eccentric inventors. I think he's too irate to talk to at the moment. I should wait until he's calmed down a little. Okay. What an amazing machine. It can analyze things. Well, I suppose it could help children with their schoolwork or something. It appears that one can insert thin items into the engine via that slot. I've never seen anything like it. It might be something to do with the analytical engine. Maybe I can use this to help that little professor chap. I've already got one. It's covered in little holes placed in a precise pattern. Maybe if I were to make a few new holes, I could sabotage their machine. Hmm. He looks after the exhibits in the Institute. Vielleicht kann man ein neues Haustier ja helfen. Mhm. Mhm. Well, she looks like a very fashionable lady. Where to, Governor? Take us home, driver. My manservant will give you directions. Hmm? Ah, witness the merciless taunting of the helpless mouse. I suppose the feline instinct is still strong within 73, but then again, it could be a human trait. I say, excuse me, uh, 73? Oh, it's no good. He's completely engrossed. This plant is quite popular with cats, so I've heard. Leave the mouse alone, dear boy. Try this instead. I believe cats quite like it. Oh, wow, man. Cosmic. I feel... groovy.
While 73 is otherwise engaged, I shall save the poor mouse from a long, protracted death. <laughs> it's a little mouse, barely alive after 73's attentions. I don't think I'll disturb him right now. I don't think I'll disturb him right now. Ich würde sagen, wie es weitergeht, das erfährst du erst in der nächsten Folge. Ich bedanke mich fürs Zuschauen. Bis